Hello friends, welcome back to Homeschool Art. Today we're talking about the artist Alexander Calder. Alexander Calder was born in Lawton, Pennsylvania in 1898. As a little boy, he was super curious and he loved making things with his hands. And so he, he made all kinds of things. He would take wire and other little objects, wire and paper and wood and things like that. And he would make little tiny sculptures and he loved going to the circus. Alexander was inspired at the circus. He loved seeing the acrobats and all of the movement and the people doing tricks and the animals. And so he decided as a young boy to create his own circus. And so he used wire and he did things super intricately and detailed and he made a little teeny circus. In his circus it had animals and acrobats and intricate mechanisms. Alexander loved working with his hands. Alexander held a variety of jobs. For example, in 1919 he became a hydraulic engineer and draftsman for the New York Edison Company. In June 1922, Alexander took a mechanic position on a passenger ship, the HF Alexander. While sailing from San Francisco to New York City, Alexander slept on the deck. He woke up early one morning off the Guatemalan coast and witnessed both the sun rising and the moon setting on opposite horizons. He described in his autobiography, it was early one morning on a calm sea off Guatemala when over my couch, a coil of rope, I saw the beginning of a fiery red sunrise on one side and the moon looking like a silver coin on the other. Calder loved the beauty of this moment. And later on, he decided to go to New York City and enroll in an art school. Calder enrolled in the prestigious Art Students League. There he studied painting and drawing. He realized that his main passion and aptitude was with sculpture. Early on, Alexander Calder used abstract shapes and elements, really simplified forms in his sculptures. He loved to use wire and wood and found objects. In 1926, Alexander moved to Paris. In Paris, Alexander started to explore the idea of movement in sculpture. Alexander Calder pioneered the mobile. One of Alexander's friends in Paris was Marcel Duchamp, who was also a very famous artist. And Marcel named Alexander's moving sculptures mobiles, which is a French pun that means motion and motive. So for a while, Alexander's mobiles, they kind of moved at the same rate and the same speed. And he, he decided they, they kind of looked boring. And so he, he went away from engineered movement. He decided to make it so the air could be the thing that moved his mobiles because that movement was different and spontaneous. He felt like that spontaneity was much more beautiful than a mechanized movement. Alexander's reputation grew and grew and so did his artwork. Most Mostly he's known for his wonderful mobiles and he, he loved making those his whole life but he started to get into sculptures that were bigger and bigger and bigger. He also designed tapestries and jewelry, ballet costumes. Alexander loved to experiment with different colors, different art forms. He was never just stuck in one mode. He liked to do all kinds of things. Later on in life, Alexander Calder started to make what he called stables huge gigantic sculptures that were stable and didn't move. These sculptures can be seen throughout the world. These are massive installation pieces that are geometric shapes and bright bold colors. And now for some inspiration. Alexander Calder said, when everything goes right, a mobile is a piece of poetry that dances with the joy of life and surprise. Above all, art should be fun. Just as one can compose colors or forms, so one can compose motions. To most people who look at a mobile, it's no more than a series of flat objects that move. To a few, though, it may be poetry. Why must art be static? You look at an abstraction, sculptured or painted, an entirely exciting arrangement of planes, spheres, nuclei, entirely without meaning. It would be perfect, but it is always still. The next step in sculpture is motion. To an engineer, good enough means perfect. With an artist, there's no such thing as perfect. And lastly, the underlying sense of form in my work has been the system of the universe, or part thereof, for that is a rather large model to work from. Art project of the day. I want you to go get 
some pieces of paper. They can be brightly colored, construction paper or cardstock. Cardstock kind of stands up a little bit better. Our family used markers and we just did little designs on the front and the back of this piece of paper. You could do circles or little M's or lines. One of my son decided to draw bones. Another one did a flag and other designs. My daughter did some swirly lines and some stars. Just whatever you want. Cover your paper with some designs. Then you fold it in half. And I'm gonna show you what I did. I'm gonna show it big scale. So this is a painting that I did a while ago. I'm gonna make it into an Alexander Calder inspired paper sculpture. I'm gonna fold it in half, kinda large. Okay, so I folded it in half. It's not perfect. Here is the folded edge. You don't wanna cut over the folded edge. So you wanna cut from the open side. First of all, on the top I might do a squiggly line. So I'm gonna go actually from the folded edge. I'm gonna cut a squiggly line that goes down. And that's just gonna be my top edge. That one did go over the, over the fold, but now we don't go over the fold. So watch closely. I'm gonna start closer to the edge and I'm gonna go up and then I'm gonna go over close, but I'm not gonna go over the edge. See how I, I didn't cut through it. So now I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go up. And then I'm gonna come over, but I don't go all the way through. And now I'm gonna do a thick one. You can do what, you can vary how thick yours are. This one's going to go really tall. Way up here. And this is poster board that I painted on. That's what I'm going to do. You're going to open it up like this. See how there are pieces down here. And I'm going to fold them one way. So they're going to be opposite. So this side right here, I'm going to fold forward a little bit. So I'm going to do a little crease right here. So that one's gonna go forward and this one's gonna go back just a little bit. And then I'm gonna do it opposite. So now this side is gonna go forward. And the other side will go back. Now down here, it's gonna, this is crazy because it's all over the place. This one's gonna go forward and this other one's gonna go back. And now I'm gonna stand it up. These are paper sculptures that my kids did and I'll show you in a minute. And I'm gonna put up this sculpture of mine. So one side goes forward and the other side goes back. Ooh, it's kind of not standing up very well. Oh my goodness, that took a while to stand up. But there it is standing. So sculptures were made out of huge pieces of metal. They were super sturdy. This is paper, so a lot less sturdy. Now I'm gonna show you what my kids did. First, this is one that I did. I did all kinds of circles and little M shapes and lines. When you bend it different ways and it looks different in all the different ways that you turn it, you could put a hole in it and hang it by string from your ceiling and it's like a cool mobile that turns and changes and looks different at every level. It's pretty awesome. The little pieces of paper stand up way better than the big ones do. I'm gonna turn it just a little bit so you can see. Then I had a son who did his and he did long, long pieces that are really skinny. And look how it turns, it's amazing. It's so fun that it looks different at every turn. Then my daughter did stars on one side and these crisscross squiggly lines on the other. But look, as you turn it, you can see both the stars and the crisscrosses at different times. That is so much fun to do. Then my little bitty boy, my little guy, he decided to draw a person and he did a short squatty one. I kind of feel like it's an elephant type shape, but it's super sturdy actually. And then he created some other, other little teeny tiny ones. Those are some of the things that my family did this time and they're way fun to do and super fast. This is a project that takes no time at all. Our element of the day, we're gonna talk about space. Here's a painting that I did at one point. So here's the main focus of the painting, right? This arch. Everything around your main object is called negative space. And the area that is your primary object, the, the most important thing or element in your painting, that is called your positive space. All of that is important in your artwork. It's not just the main thing that's important, but you have to think also about 
What's happening around your elements? Is that interesting? Positive and negative space work together and they both need to be interesting. If you painted a picture and there was a little teeny object and the rest was negative space, you might be saying this object is lonely or isolated because there's so much space. That's what it would feel like. And that might be what you want to say, but you have to think, what does the positive space and the negative space say together? So there's also three-dimensional space. Perfect illusion of three-dimensional space in a two-dimensional work of art is something that many artists have worked their whole lives trying to master. Because you're just drawing a 2D form, that means it's not 3D, it's not a sculpture, so it's hard to get people to see that's far away, this is close. Artists have to learn how to create an illusion of depth. Real space is three-dimensional. When you walk outside, you can see a mountain far, far away and a tree up close and you, in your mind, you know that mountain is far away, the tree is closer to me. But as an artist, you have to come up with a way to make that look three-dimensional as much as possible. So you use your negative space and your positive space and you use three-dimensional space to try and create depth in your artwork. Thank you so much for joining Homeschool Art for our lesson today on Alexander Calder. I hope you use your curiosity and the things that you're interested in and you go out and make works of art. It doesn't have to be painting. If that's not what you wanna do, then maybe go build something. Please like and subscribe if you liked this video and share with everybody that you know who might be interested in this. Bye.